Hi, now that you have assembled your star finder, I will show you how to use it once you get outside on, under the real sky. So the first thing you need to do is to align the date and the time at which you want to observe. And once you get outside, it might be a bit tricky because what looks like a half sphere above your head is actually shown here flat on paper. So the outside, the edge of the oval shaped hole here that you see, it represents the horizon. So everywhere around you, that's the horizon which means the point right in the middle of the oval represents what we call the zenith, which is really the point overhead. So to view the sky as a half sphere, you would need to sort of put it above your head and shape it like a hat a little bit, not easy to do. So the best thing to do is actually to know which direction you're looking at. So let's say you know where the sun sets, so that would be along the western horizon. And you can see here it says western horizon. So what you need to do is turn your star finder so that the direction at which you're looking, which is west, coincides with what's written here on the star finder, the western horizon. So the stars that will be in front of you will be the ones right here. Keep in mind that if you go all the way up to the center of the oval, then that's the point overhead. So it gives you an idea of the height of the objects in the sky. Now if you want to look north, then you turn it a bit more until it says northern horizon, and here's what you would see in front of you. In the case with the alignment I put here, you might notice something. This is the Big Dipper, part of Ursa Major. It is the best known constellation in the Northern Hemisphere, and it is a very good starting point when you want to observe the sky and learn your constellations. Because it's pretty easy once you, when you have the star finder in front of you, you have all the stars and constellations, but once you get under the real sky, then you have no labels anywhere. So the trick is start with what you know, maybe the Big Dipper and start from there. Um, Realize that the bigger the dot here, the brighter the star in the sky. So maybe try to find the brightest stars in the sky. Try to find them on the star finder afterwards. And maybe this way you can get started by finding other constellations too. One thing you have to keep in mind though is that planets can, can look like bright stars, but they won't be shown on the star finder because they keep moving in the solar system. And so do we actually. So you have a dark line here that's called Path of Planets. This is where the planets would be if they were shown on the star finder. So if you see a bright star that's not shown here, but it is in line with this dark circle, then it's most likely a planet. So this is a trick to use a star finder. Don't try to use it above like this, flat above your head. It's pretty tricky. So make sure you turn it around as you observe in different directions and that will make it easier. And have fun with it. Um, you have to be patient to learn the stars and constellations but this is a very useful tool to get started. Thank you.